Hello and welcome. I think it's time for another dram. 22nd of December, we've got three more chances to get another cracking whiskey out of this advent calendar. At the moment, the Valfather is still riding high at the top of the leaderboard. Let's see if we can get at least something else in the top half, I think. I would be happy with that. <laughs> this is starting to feel a little bit like fate. So when I was talking yesterday about what could possibly dethrone the Valfather, I said possibly something with at least an 18-year-old age statement, or possibly one of the more premium non-age statement whiskies. And we had the premium non-age statement whisky yesterday in the Dalmor Scar Malt, and that failed. Well, it wasn't terrible, but it's not up there. Today we have an 18-year-old whisky, and I think that's our first one. I think it's the oldest age statement, yeah, it's the oldest age statement that we've had in the 2020 Whiskey Advent Calendar. This is Dura, 18 year old. So Dura is a distillery that I'm very familiar with, I've been there, went there in 2014. And it's a nice place to visit. And the distillery, I really like Dura because it produces a really good spirit. But their marketing is not always on the mark and the way that they present their whiskey is definitely something that could be improved. They, of late, they've produced a lot of young whiskies, a lot of no aid statement whiskies. A lot of it tends to be 40% or not much higher. And I think a lot of people in the UK, especially people that have only been drinking whiskey in the last 10 years or so, may only be familiar with things like the Jura Origin, the 10-year-old, the Superstition, which are really not good. Jura as a distillery can do so much better than those whiskies. In particular, Jura whiskies that I have really liked, the 12-year-old Elixir, which I think has been discontinued, and the Jura Prophecy, which is a no-age statement whiskey, bottled a little bit higher than the rest with quite a bit of peat and in my opinion quite a bit of some rather nice older Duras in there but that's not what we've got today this is the Dura 18 year old which is bottled at 44 percent and if my memory serves me correctly I think this one is finished in something ridiculous like a red wine cask which is not what I want to hear when I'm looking at an 18 year old single malt so straight away, nosing that out of the bottle, that is quite sweet and fresh. And if I am right in saying that they finished this in a red wine cask, it definitely shows a little bit. Let's get it in the glass and give it a fair trial. So being a Jura whiskey, definitely the colour of that does look a little bit like it's had some sort of red wine treatment. Definitely a reddish tint to that, but also being Dura, you can bet that they've dumped a load of caramel colouring in this. Well, that's actually better than I expected and better than I remember. I do actually wonder, because I'm pretty sure that the 18 year old Dura that I last tried was only 42% and this says 44% so that's either a typo by Master of Malt or they've upped the ABV a little bit and it does seem like this is slightly different to what I last tried under the Dura 18 year old label and it's better but I do think that it does seem like they're sticking to those red wine casks it does seem like there's been a little bit of a, a funny cask finish gone on with this one So we're getting some orangey notes, like fresh oranges, coming from, I think, from the, the Dura spirit itself, and that's rather nice. Also getting some strawberry fondant milk chocolate notes. And some notes, something similar to, like, the, the fruity flavours of jelly bean that you can get. And also a little bit of a savoury note. And I think that a lot of this is coming from some red wine cask finish. 
I haven't researched this one, I don't know for sure that that's what they're still doing, but I'm pretty sure that's what they were doing, and it smells like they still are. It works reasonably well, especially in this. It's much better than most cask finishes that you get, especially red wine cask finishes, because they can be very heavy-handed, and they off you often lose more than you add into the whiskey by having a red wine cask finish, but this one works pretty well. Also getting a little bit of spice. Tiny hint of a curry spiciness. Little bit of a flinty mineral note, and I think that's probably coming from the red wine cask as well. Or possibly a mix of that and from the, the Jura distiller itself. Because Jura is, as far as I know, always at least slightly peated. Jura is... It's very close to Isla, geographically, but the level of peat that they use is something more like what you'd expect in a medium or lightly peated Highland whisky. It's also worth noting that the stills at the Isle of Jura distillery are astronomically tall. They're some of the tallest ones in Scotland, and having tall stills means that all of your complex, heavy aromas in your spirit have to get that much further to get up the still and over the line arm. So generally when you have taller stills like they do at Jura and other distilleries like Glenmorangie, you generally get a lighter, more refined spirit. And I think that's usually the case with most Juras that I've tried. Although they do put quite a bit of peat into a lot of their whiskies to compensate, to give it a little bit more brute strength. But I think this one, despite the cask finish, the actual base whiskey and the cask actually work together pretty well. I'm really surprised at this one. It's much better than I expected. Let's see how it tastes. So again, on the palate, it's sweet and playful. I'm not getting any huge indication that this is a really old whiskey, which is a shame, because at 18 years old, you should be able to really taste those years. You should be able to taste that it's a, a well-matured, and very old spirit and you can't I think if I was tasting this in a blind tasting I'd probably guess it's no more than 15 years old but it's still a good whiskey it's quite sweet and playful on the palate I'm getting quite a few sweet notes again confectionery and a little bit of strawberry coming through I think from the red wine but it's offset nicely by some really nice bitter oats you've got some a little bit of bitter oak a little bit of spice and quite a bitter herbal quality to this one as well. Now that bitter herbal quality, it's a little bit like some of the musty, grassy, lemony notes that you get on some rye whiskies, and also a little bit like the sort of American style hops that you get in some beers, in some IPAs. There's definitely, especially on the late palate, some rather vegetal, earthy, lemony notes. I'm also getting some medium roasted coffee flavors on the palate as well. As for the finish, I'm going to say medium short, and I think that's probably partly to blame for the, the wine cask finish. I think that's really cut down on the finish, and you've lost probably quite a bit of complexity as well, because red wine is a difficult one to make work, and I think it covers up a lot that's kind of unavoidable, that you're adding in some rather heavy flavors, and that's going to mask some of the delicate flavours, some of the intricacies that were in the whiskey to start with. Interestingly, late on the palate and into the finish, I am getting more of those lemony, grassy, vegetal notes, and there's something in there a little bit like cannabis. You know, when you're walking around outside and you pass someone that's smoking a slightly suspicious cigarette, and you get a little bit of that slightly hoppy cannabis smell, there's a little bit of that sort of aroma, flavour on the late palate and finish. And that's something really curious. And I'm not sure if that's coming from the red wine cask or, or where that's come from, to be honest. I think the only distillery that I can think of that springs to mind that I've really experienced that hoppy cannabis note in a whiskey before would be Hillside, which is a distillery that's been closed for a long time now, but... 
the the few times that I've been lucky enough to try Hillside, which is fairly good whiskey from what I've tried. It's also had some of those rather odd flavours in it. So I did say that I wouldn't be giving grades to these whiskies that I'm doing in the advent calendar, but for what it's worth, I would probably give this one a high B, probably between a B and a B plus. It's pretty good and it's much better than the, the previous 42% ABV. I'm sure that's what it used to be bottled at. So it is good that Dura are improving, but it's also not so good that it does seem like the cask treatment on this one has taken away some of what I assume would be some more old malty notes, which is something that I really like. So it's sad to see them put such a heavy-handed cask treatment on such an old whiskey, in my opinion. For what it's worth, in my humble opinion, Dura Distillery, they they do seem like they're in a little bit of an identity crisis, especially when you look at things, well, like an 18-year-old whiskey with a cask finish, and when you look at things like the Seven Wood, advertising a whiskey as having seven different wood treatments on it and trying to sell that as a positive thing, especially when you look at the price of some of these oddly constructed whiskies. I really feel like they'd be better off just having something like Dura Prophecy and Dura Elixir, maybe something else, no age statement, but with maybe a little bit more peat than Superstition had, and then have your prestige whiskies like the, the 21 and the 30, and I just think that they'd be so much better off promoting something like that, rather than the, the constantly changing range that they've got at the moment. Because... And I say this because I really want Dura to be one of my favourite distilleries, and I think it could be if they concentrated on things like the Elixir 12-year-old and the Prophecy. But that's probably wishful thinking. Let's stick to what we've got here. Where is Dura 18-year-old going on our leaderboard? So those hoppy notes are immediately making me think of the Glenfiddich IPA cask. And I think that's probably around the point where the Dura 18 is going to end up on our leaderboard. I do think that this is a better whiskey than the Glenfiddich IPA, but not by much. It's not better than the Uncle Nearest Bourbon, because I really like that. I'm going to put that in between those two up there. So we now have two drams left, two chances for another winner or it's going to be 2020 is the year of the Valfather. Let me know in the comments how you're doing with your whiskey advent calendars, and if you're keeping a leaderboard, let me know how you've ranked them so far, if you agree or disagree, what's been your favourite so far this year. Thanks for watching. Cheers.